How's it going YouTube? Welcome to Battlefield 3, quick play of the day. It's Ford here and I have not given you guys a video in a long time. So this is kind of payback for me being a lazy ass. So. Um, right off the bat, I want to teach you guys a quick trick. Um, it's very simple and I have seen a lot of people utilize it. And what you're going to do is you get two snipers. That's really all you need is two snipers with tug systems. Not Mavs, tugs. What you want to do is you want to put one tug here and you know you'll have your people battling for that way. We're Americans at the moment so we're trying to go that way. And I'll teach you a trick for a tug there too. And so after you have the one tug on the right door, right where I just showed you, you want to put one either there right here this is a better spot because it's kind of protected from grenades due to the wall so if you throw a grenade it normally won't hit it from there and capturing alpha is really overrated when you're fighting towards the American deployment just put a tug there a tug there and if you guys are pretty smart you'll put another tug somewhere near here doesn't really matter and uh, then get somebody who has um, a machine gun with a bipod and you basically want to do what this dude's doing you want to set up set it up so you can cover this door and this door and when you have a machine gun it's very easy to pick up your bipod quickly run over here and deploy it again and that'd be deploy and you have that whole view now let's say you see another ping on the screen see I'm doing this in the middle of a combat zone so bear with me but you can cover the three doorways and lock them out completely now normally that's a goal for Metro is to lock the people out of the ticket hall. But if you're going this way, you're going to want to put a tug at it's the midpoint between the two vending machines when you're at the ticket hall. If I can get over there, I'll show you. Let me put the tack order on there. Hey, tack order. There you go. Hold on one second, YouTube. There's a lot of shit going on. Okay. Ugh, they're pouring over too much. There we go. That's a wee bit better. So, see where this guy's Mav is? If you have a tug, you should put it right there. If you put the tug in between the vending machines, you're going to get uh, 360 degrees of good coverage. You'll be able to see the left-hand hallway, the back escalators, and the front. And that way you can pin it down and really get a, a good grip on your enemy right there. Now that's just for tugs and stuff like that. That's one of the easiest tricks that I can give you for that part. Okay, so now we are moving towards the American deployment, and I always run straight for Bravo. It's kind of like a personal choice. Um, some people like to capture the first objective, like Alpha or Charlie, depending on what side you're on. But I always go towards this one. I mean, it gets you into the fight quicker, and like that, you're going to die real quick. But at the same time, while other people are capping off either Alpha or Charlie... You're, you're helping hold Bravo. And Bravo is the midpoint no matter what. So it really doesn't matter what side you're on. As long as you run straight for Bravo on Metro, um, you're going to have a good chance of being able to hold it. Now, we only have three people up there. So now people are finally catching up from Charlie and going to Bravo. So. Oh, I already got a couple guys over here. Got a grenade, too. I'm dodging all kinds of shit today. I'm just like, ah, it's a confetti party. Oh, and I want to teach you guys a really bitching trick with the EOD bot. It's not really a trick. It's just using what you got. Um, what you're going to do is you're going to be using the EOD bot as a secondary camera. So when you're out in battle, you can watch other hallways. For example, so... Let's say we're getting kind of pinned down here, so I put an EOD bot. Now, I can be on any side of this map, and I can automatically go to this like a camera. Now, of course, this dude's shooting it because he's being an asshole, but otherwise, 
you would be able to see that hallway no matter what. Um, another good one is using a MAV. But the thing with the MAV is it's only in black and white. It's thermal. And although that comes in handy when you're in the air on the battlefield, for this kind of combat zone, you really kind of don't want to do that. Um, that's why I prefer the tug versus the the MAV. Also, you can use the slow flam. I found the slow flam. Yeah, excuse me. So flam. I just woke up today, so my bad. Um, it's incredibly helpful as a camera. Only downfall is obviously it has a red laser on it because it's meant to laser designate targets. So it kind of gives it away. You got to take it, you know, with a grain of salt. Um, but other than that, it's a those tools can be a secondary eye. You can also place it on the back objective. So let's say I place the tug either there or, you know, wherever you put it. But if I put a soflam, I will be able to continuously give information to my squad. And if I'm on team chat, I can give it to my team where exactly the enemy is. Now, it kind of sounds like really weird. You know, you're like, well, why would I be using cameras and all that shit? But it, it'll really put an impact towards your... Uh, towards your team's effort to capturing and holding objectives. With Battlefield, it is it is given so much detail and awesomeness that you really got to think outside the box. Like you you got to use everything they give you. Just because you hate a certain weapon or a certain piece of equipment doesn't mean it's useless. I mean, I'm not a shotgun user. I hate using shotguns. Um currently, the only reason I'm using shotguns it's because I need stars for them. But as soon as I get a star here and there, I put the freaking shotgun back, pull out my L85A2, and I go to town. So that's that little memo right there. Get back over here. Where are you going, buddy? Where are you going? There you go. Pop your head up. Thank you. And the thing with tugs is you need to move them constantly. If you're in a high combat zone, you really do need to be able to move them and find new locations so right now I put my tug right there so we can see the outskirts but after ooh, I'm gonna get overrun yeah knew that was gonna happen but um where was I going with that oh yeah kinda move your tugs around um when you're certainly getting to the opposite farthest objective because that'll give you time to slowly locate hidden targets and, you know, people camping and hiding and all that good shit. <clears throat> so, kind of think of your tugs as another pair of ears or eyes. It's All the equipment is just amazing how much you can use it for different stuff. Hello, Copa. Oh, no. Prody Pebble. I got killed by a Prody Pebble. So that's where that at. But other than that, we're going to try to get some good kick in. This other team is pretty good. Um, I believe they switched one of our team players over there. No, I guess he just left. But that dude got 150 to, I think, what was it, like 70-something? It was not bad. That was a pretty good KD. Dude, these guys are getting jacked up over here. Trick or pick up placement? <laughs> Pop headshots. Um, one thing for my viewers that you guys might all notice is the clarity of my video. In one way, it kind of has approved, but at the same time, it kind of has a grainy look to the screen. Because I'm already looking at it and I can. Get out of here. This is my house. My house. My locker room. Punk? You're all punks. Woo! Oh, I almost killed myself in the fire. Oh, crap. I need a medic. I need a moodic. Moodic! Coors Man! There you are. Coors Man! Hey, there's a Coors Man right next to me, motherfucker. Drop me a med kit! Drop me a med kit! I need med kit! Thank you. That's what I needed. Yeah. Alright, we're good to go. 
Aw, oh, team kill. This is why I don't play hardcore. I end up killing so many blueberries that uh, it's not even funny. Like, I do it by complete accident like that guy did. I already know he was trying to shoot over my shoulder and it just didn't work. Ooh. I did not play that one right. I should have went for the machine gunner or thrown a grenade in there. That way they'd kind of scatter. The splash damage would affect both of them and then I could take them out um, as I please, but... I didn't really do that one very good. Um, we'll whip this out. I haven't, I haven't used this gun in forever. And also, you guys may notice that, uh, my tag name isn't Ford. Ow, motherfucker, friendly fire. Um, damn. First I get shot by my own people, and then I get shot by the enemy. Uh, but yeah, I'm playing on my brother Tungzin's account, so... If any of the stuff is different, like the unlocks, the obviously the tag name, that was a big giveaway. But um, I'm currently not using my account. I, I don't think I've logged in for like six, maybe seven days. It's been like a week. Um, and I've been helping my bro out, unlock all the assignments and stuff like that. <clears throat> so I've been more focusing on his account than my account. So that's where that's at. And his his TV is big. He has a really big TV. I forgot how big this is. I think it's like a 72 inch. This thing's massive. Um, so that's why the screen keeps going in and out with auto auto zoom. Is it's trying to? <laughs> it's got this huge screen that it's trying to compete with. So. And this dude's already unloading shells like nobody's business. I didn't get a single kill off that. But I'm almost in first place, so I really don't care. Almost, almost. Doo -doo -doo -doo. So, I was going to play the role of a sniper, but we have two snipers already in the squad. Now, even in the Battlefield 3 handbook, you it even tells you, do not have more than one sniper in your squad. And we, well, one guy just left. But now we have one, plus a medic, so... To support my team, I'm going to come in with ammo. It's just kind of the good thing to do. I mean, Battlefield isn't a one-man army kind of deal, you know? You got to you gotta work as a team to get shit done. <laughs> oh, and I'm going to stress again to use multi-kitting. I'm not the first person that came up with it, but I kind of did think of it myself, but, you know, other people found it out too. If you have the kind of peace in the combat zone, and you are combat effective, let's say this guy drops, and there's an enemy right there that, and let's say they killed each other, right? And I just kind of came across the battle fight. Well, if he's dead, I can pick up his kit, revive him, and if he's on my squad, I can tell him to pick up his kit later. Like, because he'll be right next to him. Get out of my way. Get out of my way! Oh, there's a bunch of snipers. A bunch of snoopers back there. So, I need to do my job and supply my team. If I can get to them. <laughs> These guys have it locked down pretty good. Um, That's an interesting duct take. I haven't seen that one. Before. That's a new one. But yeah, so use multi-kitting as much as possible. You know, if you kill a sniper and there's nobody around, throw a tug down or throw a beacon. You know, utilize other people's kits. Um, I've played games just to get good at multi-kitting. I've played, uh, what was it? Stop reviving me next to a machine gun. That's another thing. Shoot the enemy, then revive. It's so simple. But for people, it is apparently a very hard thing to think about. Get him wrong, get him, get him. Ooh, Ron got laid out. I'm going to spawn on my buddy here. Oh, really? You're going to come in with that big old shotgun, huh? Get out of here with that shit, motherfucker. No, oh, shit, grenade. Run, no, her. Oh, you missed. You suck at m 320 But he does not suck at aiming. <laughs> So I just wanted to throw that to you guys and have a great day.